All right, I think we can go ahead and get uh, kicked off for today. So first and foremost, just wanted to thank everybody for taking a little bit of time out of their day to join Data Theorem for our live demo series. Um, and I will say before I introduce our speaker here, um, uh, just want to let everybody know we will reserve time at the end of the presentation for questions. So if you do have a question, please feel free to drop it into the uh, WebEx chat window uh, and we'll do our best to, to make sure we get around to that at the end of uh, today's presentation. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Hamanchu, who will be our speaker today. Hamanchu? Great. Thanks, Richard. Hello, everyone. Thank you for your time um, this morning. We'll go ahead and dive right in and talk about today's session. Um, before we do that, just one slide on Data Theorem. Uh, we cover mobile, web, API, and cloud application security, all in the goal of, goal of preventing AppSec data breaches. Should you have any questions on that, feel free to ping uh, Richard or myself or anyone at Data Theorem at any time. All right. So today we're here to talk about spying on the clipboard, uh, specifically in iOS. It's uh, possible on Android as well. And how we came to this discussion recently was due to an article uh, published by uh, two researchers uh, in March uh, down there below. And the link is down there to give them full credit um, as well. Well, basically what happened is many apps, uh, I guess, according to them, 53 apps were essentially pulling data out of your clipboard without your knowledge or permission. Now, um, this all came about because iOS 14 beta recently came out. And when you use iOS 14 beta, it will actually show you which apps are pulling from the clipboard. So it's kind of creepy. So when you're using your app, um, you know, or your apps, plural, you're copying and pasting stuff all over the place. And so uh, that other apps are kind of looking in that somewhat non-technical private area, even though technically all apps have been having access to this the whole time for a very long time. So essentially this article came out um, showing that 53 apps, including TikTok, is looking at your clipboard beta, uh, data quite often. Now, uh, before this in June of 2020, um, we actually pointed this out uh, back in August of 2014. We actually won a startup competition because of this very reason. So Data Theorem has been checking for this issue since the company was founded. And what we did is there was a CSO, CISO startup competition in Black Hat, uh, I guess six years ago now. And, uh, and we had to do things to kind of impress uh, and to impress them. So what I did is I said simply like, hey, here's a uh, iPhone um, or an iPod in, the, in this case, and it has our app on it from the app store. It wasn't a data theorem app, it was this test app called SiteScreen. And I say, hey, if you feel confident um, on taking this phone that's not jailbroken uh, from an app that's from the Apple App Store and using it, then, uh, then you don't need data theorem. You don't need us as a, as a product. But if you don't feel confident using a non-jailbroken phone and downloading an app from the legitimate App Store, uh, then you should probably talk to us quickly. And the reason I put, obviously, uh, for them to talk to us quickly is uh, the clipboard. So we just did a very simple attack, which was basically gathering all their data from the clipboard. And, uh, and executives took our iPod, we gave them an iPod to be quite honest, um, and they used it. And about a week later, we told them all the data that we collected by this very, very low tech, very impactful attack, uh, which is another problem in security. Some of the low tech attacks get no attention. As you can see, six years later, we're still with this issue. But we end up winning the competition uh, over a lot of other companies only because we were able to hand a legitimate device that everyone's using and take CSO level data from them without really their knowledge or permission because it was from the app store itself. So while the uh, good folks um, on this article kind of made this uh, a little bit more apparent just a, a month ago, this issue has been around for a very long time, as you can see here. Okay. So what is this issue? What are we talking about a little bit more technically? Well, it's something that we've all done before. And, and here, here is the, here's the process. Um, you know, we are using um, copy, the simple copy uh, function within iOS or Android all the time. Um, you might be copying passwords, Wi-Fi keys, your home address, even a photo. Um, has anyone received this text message on the right side that, hey, what is your Wi-Fi password? 
it's maybe from a coworker visiting your office, uh, maybe uh, a friend of your son or daughter visiting your house, uh, maybe at the um, at the uh, at the uh, local coffee shop out there. It's like, what's your Wi-Fi password? So what do you do? So uh, if you're at the home or office, you text the person the Wi-Fi password so they can get their job done, right? Um, we all have to be functional. And then what is what happens next after you text the Wi-Fi password where the user copies the text and uh, and then they paste it. They're either pasting that text into the Wi-Fi network or if it's a password, a banking app probably. If it's a home address, they're pasting that in Google Maps. And if it's a photo, it's in the photo roll. So, you know, the things that you're copying on the top are being pasted into the bottom, right? So, so this is normal. We've all done at least some type of this at some point in the, maybe the past hour, if not the past week. So what just happened? Well, what happened is TikTok now has access to every password you copied, every Wi-Fi uh, key you copied, your home address, and any photo you copied. And it's not just TikTok. It's those 53 other apps, but we're going to kind of pick on TikTok because it's everyone's favorite punching bag right now. Rightfully so, they are doing some creepy things out there. But once you copied anything on your iOS device, any app, TikTok or any other app on your device has full access to that clipboard. And by the way, they know it and they're taking data from it. This is not accidental. They know they've had that access. We pointed it out in 2014 and they uh, are double dialing on it because there's good data in your clipboard about who you are and what you do, and maybe even worse, about the credentials you have on your environment. So now what? So so what what can we do? What what's going on here? Well, the news is the clipboard data is still globally shared across iOS. So so when you copy anything today, tomorrow, next week, next year, your children's phone, your uncle, your grandparents, it's all accessible to every app on your device. Full stop. Now, the good news is starting in iOS 14, iOS now displays anytime an app is taking data from your pasteboard. So that's good ish news, meaning that they're not preventing it. They're just telling you that someone just took your data. So I'm not sure if that's good news. At least you're aware of the creepy apps taking access to your clipboard. But again, there are iOS will tell you after it happens. So it's something that's not quite what we want, but at least it's a little bit more visibility of which apps are spying on you via the clipboard itself. And, and, and don't get me wrong, there is good data in that clipboard about who you are. And I'll, I'll go through some examples in a second. Okay, well, actually I'll do it right now. Here's the demo. So, okay, here's a demo. I'm gonna hit play in a second. So this is just a sample uh, iOS device. And I downloaded some, um, um sensitive apps that most likely every uh corporate person has on their phone LastPass, which is a password manager this is nothing against LastPass. any password managers out there um a two-factor authentication device again i have no problem with uh, the authenticator one here but um but i just downloaded it so LastPass, just think of password managers authenticator just think of two-factor authentication and then finally, um, do this yourself, um, right? Even during this call, download some apps on the app store right now that just copy your clipboard legitimately, not as a not as a sneaky thing to do, just doing it by the functionality that iOS offers. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. And uh, and hopefully you're seeing this okay. But essentially what I'm gonna do is open up LastPass. And you can see I just created a default Wells Fargo account. And I'm gonna show the password first. So this is the last pass password, last password. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and copy that from my password manager. And I just hit copy. You can see it's into the clipboard. And now I'm going to go to the clipboard app. And there it is, right? It just took data from the clipboard automatically. Two different apps sandbox from each other um, sharing data. Now, this is our HR department. Our HR department is uh, hopefully not being fished. So they use a two-factor authentication app. And this is the code they need to use to log in to their HR portal. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that if I'm an HR admin at Data Theorem. And then, bam, you can see the two-factor authentication code has also been um, shared um, from one app to the other. And then finally, I'm going to get a text message from a bank. And a bank is going to send me a two-factor authentication via SMS. So 00051 is my SMS two-factor authentication code. 
And as you can see here, it's been copied to this clipboard app. Now the clipboard app represents TikTok, represents those other 53 app apps, it represents any app on your device. So this is all from the app store. This is all technically possible. And this is what that article is about, um, about who is sneaking data from your device, why are they doing it, and how is this possible? So sadly, whether it's LastPass legitimately or a two-factor authentication app legitimately, or TikTok or any other app illegitimately, it's all possible and it's all happening right now. iOS 14 makes you more aware, but back from our, uh, our victory in 2014 of the hacker concept, this has been around for a very long time. Okay, so are you spying? If, if any of you who have joined this webinar, if, you, if your company has mobile apps, you should be asking yourself right now, are we spying on our own users as marketing or developers are doing this? Because there were legit apps on those 53 on that, um, on that article. And here are some of the apps that are legitimate. Um, NPR was, uh, you know, beloved, beloved NPR was doing, uh, was co uh, copying information from the clipboard. Russia Today, we know all Russia Today apps are 100% legitimate. Um, so they were actually copying information from the clipboard. And there's others here that are maybe legitimate, maybe not, I'll let you decide. But the point is, it's not just TikTok. There's a whole bunch of apps doing this. So are you by accident doing this for legitimate purposes? Because it looks creepy. Um, and if you are, do you want to continue doing this? And that's what we're here to say with our product. We can scan your apps free of charge today. Uh, contact Richard or myself. We're serious about this and letting you know, are you doing this? Obviously, hopefully people on this call are legitimate organizations. We can let you know, did you accidentally do what NPR did or what Russia Today did or what the Huffington Post did, Wall Street Journal, list goes on. We can let you know if you're um, accidentally copying information from the pasteboard that you probably shouldn't be. Um, because if you're putting data in the pasteboard, that's somewhat okay. But if you're not putting data there, why the heck are you pulling data from there? And that's something that this check and our product can check for uh, uh, later today if you wish. Now, the cool thing in iOS 14, you now have abilities to take some data without accessing the pasteboard. So you might say, hey, hold up data theorem, we're using this legitimately. So we're not spying on our users. And we're like, we get it. And this is the way you can continue to get that data legitimately without looking like a spying app, without showing up on this wall of shame by those two researchers. So this function here is the secure code to make sure that you can continue to do the legitimate actions that you're doing without looking like a creepy app on that uh, wall of shame list. And then here's exactly how to do it. Um, and you can see below, accessing the properties above does not cause an alert to be shown to the user. So you don't get uh, on that creepy list like some of the other apps have already done. Okay, but now let's switch gears, right? Like let's say, okay, we're not spying on our users, but we're legitimately using this. Um, so we are putting data into the pasteboard for our users to use. So, so what do we do? I don't want TikTok looking at that data. Um, I don't want, you know, I don't want Russia today looking at that data, but I got to use the pasteboard, uh, uh, pasteboard. So data theorem, tell me what I should do. Well, here's what you should do. The cool thing is iOS, Apple already has a solution. You can set your data that you're putting in the pasteboard to expire. This actually came out in iOS 12. So this has been around for a while. No one's been really using it. We've been talking about it since then. But now what you can do is like, okay, I'm going to put data in the pasteboard and I'm going to put an expiration on it. So that by the time um, TikTok or any other creepy app tries to access it, it doesn't matter, the data is gone. So by default, if you put data in the pasteboard, it's there forever or for a long time. And now you can, as of iOS 12, you can set an expiration so it doesn't linger so other apps get access to it. And down below, you can see the secure code how to do this right now today. So it's a way to basically get around um, the the issue, which is, you know, your your legitimate app using Paceport legitimately, and now, you know, whether you're LastPass or or uh, an authenticator app or some kind of banking app with two-factor authentication, 
you can say, listen, we're going to keep this data in the pasteboard for a limited amount of time. We can't change iOS, but we can at least protect our data. So that legitimate app I showed in the demo, which I strongly agree with legitimate, um, you're going to have to copy data. Your user is going to have to do that. But now you can basically protect them from themselves and make sure all the other apps they have downloaded that should not have access to this data, whether it's a password, password or a Wi-Fi key, is uh, is locked down with this expiration um, secure code. And that's about it. That's all I got. You know, quick and simple. But you know, this is a real easy way. And don't get confused by how easy it is, uh, how much it's being abused. Um, it's the abuse is out there, um, but it easy way for apps to steal your data. Again, we won a startup competition six years ago doing this very thing. So definitely use the expiration on your pasteboard if you're using it. And again, if you don't know you're pasting data on the pasteboard, Data Theorem will do that free of charge. Again, we'll do that for you to let you know what data you're pasting, one, or what data you're pulling. So feel free to contact us at any time um, because we do want to make sure you, everyone knows this is widely abused because it's one of the rare ways on iOS where you can basically break the sandbox and get data from the app by just being downloaded on the user's device. Um, and with that, Richard, I'll hand it back over to you to see if you have any questions or comments um, or anything else. Yeah, so um, no questions so far at the moment. I'll give everybody maybe a minute or so if they, they want to submit a question in the uh, WebEx chat here for, uh, for Hamanchu. Doesn't look like we have any questions. Um, oh, here we go. We just have one come in. Did you mention an article with background information on this? That might be referring to that early link you had shared, Manchu. Yeah, yeah. I'll go back to the slide. So here is the article that came out just last uh, month, June 30th. Um, and uh, and the two researchers are right there. The link is right at the bottom. Um, so uh, nakedsecuritysofos.com. A uh, whole bunch of things, but if you just kind of uh, Google for iOS 14 TikTok uh, iPhone clipboards, you'll find this article. But yeah, the two researchers uh, basically created a wall of shame. Uh, 53 other apps. Hopefully, your app is not on it. I do think they're going to be updating this on a regular basis, um, both the good and bad. Um, they've removed some apps that fixed this and uh, and added new ones. But here is the uh, here's the link uh, to that article um, based on the stuff we just got. And yeah, I see Richard. I went ahead and posted it in the uh, the chat for everyone. Yeah, and if you wish, so we're doing a little bit something differently. We're creating a wall of fame. So if you follow the Data Theorem LinkedIn um, um, uh, news feed, or even uh, Richard or myself, we're going to be posting all the apps in the uh, in the App Store that already have protected against this. So we're going to create a wall of fame, be positive, and show you. You know, if you're using social networking apps, which ones have already protected against this? Um, so you get some uh, positive news out of this article and not just negative. So look out for that or or connect with the Data Theorem LinkedIn to, to see that, uh, I think, early next week. So we do have one more question, Amanchu. Um, can malicious apps spy on Clipboard despite the timeout? No, if the expiration is set, um, it depends on how aggressive the expiration is set. But if you set an aggressive expiration, then no other app, including clipboard, legitimate, or any spying malicious app, will be able to access that data. And so, yeah, that's a great question. If there's one takeaway, here's the slide. Set an expiration on any data that you're putting on the pasteboard, and it will severely limit the attack surface of any app, creepy or legitimate, sitting on your, your user's iPhone device. And one could say, you know, that's another great point. One could say, well, 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 if the user is going to damage themselves by downloading these apps, what do we care? The, sadly, the data, their data in your app is compromised. So they will think the hack is against your app, not against iOS. So if my password in my bank gets compromised and, and, and money gets stolen, I'm going to go to my bank and saying, hey, it was your lack of security controls that hacked my data. 
Um, and uh, ultimately, either, even if you're correct, you're dealing with a customer support security issue, uh, which we want to avoid. So that's why aggressively making sure that the pasteboard contents have an expiration will at least reduce the ability of this uh, being ever excluded from your apps. Awesome. Well, I think that's all the questions we've got for today. Um, so with that, um, I would like to thank everybody for taking a few minutes to, uh, to join us today and uh, look forward to having you join us for future uh, Data Theorem Live uh, demos and presentations. Thank you, everyone.